Either looks like you're at the altar worshiping something you shouldn't. <laughs> You'll yeah. never convince me that evolution happened. If you can get this from a maple tree, it <laughs> was not by accident. Amen. No, we're doing. We're doing to this sack. Okay. Why you're brushing it is probably not necessary. Want to do, you know, <clears throat> on the south side as much as we can. This is the way we do it, and we don't have a cordless drill. Stay back, please. This is like a really inexpensive way to start tapping. We've got some more um, durable, expensive spirals, spiles. And we also have some five gallon buckets hooked up, but we wanted to tap several trees at one time. And affordability is definitely an issue at this point in the stage. So we've got, I think we got a pack of like 12 of those plastic um, spiles for seven or eight dollars. And we went and bought uh, the cheapest water jugs we could get. They're 94 cents each. So each tree cost us, what, a dollar and a quarter to tap it. Um, of course, obviously, we'll have to be on top of it and dump them out more, but this way we can tap several trees at one time and the production, therefore, is increased. All right, so the sap's flowing and we're finishing off this batch of sap. We'll be cooking sap all weekend. Um, we don't have a great system, but we do have a system. And I will tell you, now you hear everybody say, oh, don't cook sap in your kitchen. It is fine. It does not create... I think the thing that probably what most people don't like is... Um, well, first of all, it doesn't create a sticky, sticky coating. And the thing that most people aren't used to is the steam that comes from the maple syrup because so much it takes over 40 gallons of sap to create a gallon of syrup so that's a lot of evaporation and i understand that if you're not used to it but so many houses are dry and with the wood stove it's extremely dry and we've always got hot water going on almost always you may not almost always sometimes i have to get off because hearing the the hissy drives me nuts you guys hear me talk about it in other videos so i think because of that and what i've read about people that don't like to do it inside is the amount of steam that comes from it. And of course, if they've got drywall and they've got um, wallpaper, that is an issue. I understand that. But in our situation where, you know, our our inside is still not finished, and when it is finished, it's going to be wood. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, we have the window that helps as an exhaust, but that's designed specifically for the wood stove. So it all works out for us. You know, we don't have to have extra fire going on because it's already going to run the wood stove. So it, it's, it's just one more of those those things where the stove is a multitasker. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are doing syrup and down south you're not gonna have in, in the lower parts of the state of Michigan and other Midwest states, you're not gonna have the snow that, that we have going on. So it's logical our stove is still gonna be going um, because it is it is cold still and instead of having to cut more wood and utilize that resource we are just we just do it on our wood stove and i will show you the system i didn't i didn't do any recording this week so tomorrow when we get the pants going on i'll show you how we do it how many gallons do you think are out there today for boiling down uh. Is that dirt? Yep. Probably. I don't know what's in. Just in the gallon jugs, there's probably six or eight more gallons. Six gallons? I don't know what's in the buckets. Okay. Don't think. So we'll there. cook it down and set off the finishing until we get more. Yeah. So we have discovered with this system that we have going in the house on the stove 
We can typically plan, if we were to get going early enough, we could get 40 or more gallons of sap done a day. Um, it's not real labor intensive as far as it's just keeping it boiling. And again, since the stove is already going, it works well. We keep a big uh, pan. This is not what my water pan. As you can tell because it's not got minerals inside, but it's the same size. It's five gallon. So we keep a pan of sap warming up. And then as this evaporates um, in these in these pans, we refill. We did buy a couple of stainless steel pans. Um, that people were saying they were using for sap boiling. We got them and they're just so flimsy. I just went ahead and kept using my enamel ones. I don't, I gotta tell you, this stuff, it bothers me. The enamel's chipped there. But these are so much more sturdy and because sap, when it boils, it's, I mean, it's it's very slight like boiling water. You just have to be careful. And these, these are much more stable. So we've just kept using these. Um, we'll look for something better next year. But this size actually works out really well. They're really quite large, as you can so they go from the front to the back of the stove almost. Um, so 40 to 48 gallons of saps get you a gallon of saps, get you a gallon of syrup approximately. And we have this last week we did um we didn't start till like late morning, early afternoon. So we didn't get through 40 gallons in one day last week. We did three batches of um, about 20 gallons a day, give or take a few. And then I just held off on finishing it off till we had that third uh, cook down. And we got well over two and a half quarts of sap, or sap, of syrup out of that. Um, so it's pretty, as far as quantity for sap, it's pretty accurate. This is such an easy process. If you guys have maple trees, and even if you don't have a big setup outside, you know, you should try it. It's, it's really, it's invigorating, isn't it? It's invigorating. Um, maybe someday we'll learn how to do maple sugar. I hear there's a real knack with that. I'm not sure I'm ready to take it on. Uh, maple sap will foam when it's boiling. And if the foam is dark and dirty looking, you want to skim that off. I, we've skimmed it off before and we haven't skimmed it off. It, it, you know, it's like many things. Everybody's got a rule of thumb they go by. So, um, I don't, sometimes there's just not enough foam to mess with it on. Uh, some people say that it holds the temperature down in your, in your boiling process. But I, we don't, you know, our batches aren't big enough to get huge amounts of foam. So I don't have any problems with this, I guess. That's my personal opinion. Round, uh, when he gets antsy standing around here, he skims it. So I keep a skimmer on hand. And whenever he walks into the room, I act like I'm skimming it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Would I do that? No, it's just, you know, one of those things, personal preferences in my opinion. Again, though, if it's dirty foam, get it out of there. Uh, and you'll strain... You know, this is the early process of the boiling, so this will be strained at least once, if not twice, before it goes into the jars. So, it's all good when it gets done. So today we are, um, today we are finishing off a batch of sap that we boiled down. And I had to do this in two lots, so uh, we've had a lot of running to do the past two days. And so we did 20, uh, 15 to 20 gallons one day and then 15 to 20 gallons yesterday. And then I put the, the sap that was about ready to finish off um, into the ice box. And I put last night, actually took it off the stove last night after 11. So I put it straight outside in the snow, which we still have plenty of. Uh, as you can tell, we still have our share. So that worked out uh good and cooling it down quick and this will pile this will this has been cooking for a while or cooking down for a while we will probably need to cook it down another two three hours and then start watching the temperature at this stage I finish off the maple syrup um, just gate just gauged by temperature eventually I think and I'm not 100 percent sure but I think I'd like to get a hygrometer um, you know, apparently it makes it a lot easier to know the 
the end stage to check the amount of liquid, amount of water left in the syrup. All right, so the magic number we're looking for, and you're not gonna be able to see it on here, but trust me, yep, and you really can't see it now, is 219 when it comes to sugar or syrup. And I am all but there. I've got like one degree to go. I've checked it, I've tested it, my color's good. Um, so I think we are all but there with the syrup for the night. It looks like we got a lot more than I anticipated. I anticipated about a half a gallon and I think we've got closer to three quarts. So I'm pleased with that. Now I will have to strain this and then um, put it in its containers and we will have ourselves syrup. Once the maple syrup has cooked down, um, and at 219 is the magic temperature you're looking for. And if you have a hygrometer, hygrometer, if you have a hydrometer, I'm not sure which one it is. Hygrometer, hygrometer. Um, it really does the work for you, but, but it, you know, you can use what you have. And what we have is a candy thermometer and it works just fine. You just have to be a little bit more on top of things. One of the things that you do when you do maple sap, when you cook it down, is there's different times that you can strain it. Many people strain it about three different times. Um, I personally don't find that to be necessary. Um, there is a certain amount of, of theory, I guess, that there's natural min minerals that occur because maple sap is full of minerals. And so even though you're cooking them down, and heat, of course, destroys many things, there's still a certain amount of minerals that maintain, and we know that maple syrup is very high in minerals. So floaters and stuff, yeah, you don't want. There's a black sludge that you don't want, and there's what's called a sugar sand that you don't want. So this time, I am drain or straining it the last uh, cook down. Because I was gone yesterday and the day before, and um, Josiah, helped cook it down so I just I didn't care as long as he just kept the pans full and so I'm going to strain it now and I'm how I'm going to do it I don't have any cheesecloth but I do have a ratted old t-shirt that I'm going to use and I'm not cutting it because I I'm kind of suspicious I've never done it with this way before but I want the weight I want to slide the pan inside the t-shirt and I'm going I'm, I'm doing this I'm gonna put a rubber band around the rim of the pan. And I think just having that extra weight might help because I can tuck it underneath so it doesn't pull. Oh, wow. All right, so I'm just gonna slide this in. Put my rubber band over it. Now, of course, the weight of the liquid's gonna push this, draw that down. So I'm gonna to try to help it a little bit so I don't have a whole lot of readjusting to do. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Again, I've mentioned before, sap, syrup, if once it gets to syrup, you're at a sugar content. Hot boiling water is bad enough, but boiling sugar is even worse. Think of candy making. Make sure your area is clear. Go slowly. No, nope, it's going to deflect there. Now, if you were doing a big batch, you would want to strain this and get it right into your jar so it would seal. This batch, like the batch I did the other day, when we sit down to eat pancakes, we can easily go through over a quart with two um, meals. Between a quart, it depends, it depends on how much the pancake soaks up and how much these guys want to eat. Seems like a lot, but this is really a treat. I mean, this is maple syrup isn't something we have every day. And especially when it first comes in in the season, you know, you, you tend to eat a lot more. But I know that we will go through this um, batch pretty quick within a couple weeks. So I'm not worried about the jar sealing. Okay, word of warning. I know you guys have heard us mention before that we are a fragrance-free house. Um, if you're not and you use fabric softener or you use fragranced laundry soap, do not. Please do not use your... <laughs> Uh, old clothing because you will get that flavor into your maple syrup. Now a lot of people that are in fragranced homes do not even realize that um, because you know you use your dish towels and stuff, they don't even realize that it, it's in the food because that stuff gets into your pores and nostrils. So so you might not even notice it but you might want to try maybe just hand washing, getting fresh uh, a fresh shirt or uh, a new piece of cloth and just hand wash it in something mild if you're going to strain it this way so that you don't 
uh, get those those chemicals or that flavoring into your your maple syrup because it you know maple syrup is so easy it is so so easy but you it's a lot of time involved and it is it's a lot of it's a lot of physical time involved when it comes to gathering and once you're past the gathering stage it's just a lot of time involved keeping the the sap going into the pans to boil down yeah, there's actually quite a bit of stuff on yeah it. you can see this is this is what we call sugar sand and that's, you want to avoid that. It just really depends on what's in your, your maple, your sap. Trees have different things in it because of the soil. And there's not, you know, really stuff like this. Um, if it's left in, is it going to kill you? No. Um, and it does, you know, it's a natural product. We have this odd need for everything to be completely pure. And at the same time over ingesting pure things they're usually filled with chemicals the impure purity or the pure impurity okay so we've just got probably maybe a maybe a quarter of a cup in there more more like an eighth but we've we've got enough clog going on that i'm gonna um, go ahead and be done straining it so that is a beautiful sight bring it up here i can see you in the syrup <laughs> the face of the syrup there's just, this is like the beginning of the canning season, you know, and if you can, you know how satisfying it is to get your pantry full of canned goods. And the maple sap to maple syrup is like this huge um, gratification because there's, there's no work involved except the harvesting of it and the cooking it down. It's not like you have to start growing it from the beginning. And I mean, it's one of those foraging things that it's just it's amazing to do and it is so simple it is so simple we held off for a long time doing it because not because we thought it was complex but because we just didn't think we were set up right and i'm telling you don't let that stand in your way like i said i do it on my kitchen stove it's not the big mess that people say it is if you're not used to the steam and stuff but over here obviously we're used to the steam and stuff but as far as being sticky that's not that's not a problem at all i don't have a good ladle right now for the jars that I'm using and like I said I'm not using I'm not too worried about canning jars because it's not going to be shelf storage on this particular batch um, I'll put it in the ice box and we'll use it um, to eat over the course of the next week or two so what I'm going to do so I've commandeered the boys' little coffee pot to help pour this in it's still hot my jar is warm Now it looks, maple syrup isn't real thick by nature, okay? It is obviously thicker than what you're seeing right here, but it's thin because it's boiling hot. Once it has time to set, it will definitely be a little thicker. Looks like coffee coming out of the spout. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know about maple water, um, but that is really good to drink. It's really healthy for you. It has a lot of health benefits. And it's delicious. It's delicious. Um, these guys will tap a tree and put a drinking water bottle underneath it um, or take their cup and go take sap out of the, the t uh, container that's being tapped to cook down. It's good for diabetes. What else did we read it was good for? I'm good for digestion, good for diabetes. Anti-inflammatory. Um, girls, 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 girls. Anti-inflammatory. Okay, so that's it. That's how we do maple syrup right now. You guys give it a try. It really is super easy and you don't need special equipment. You just need uh, to have some patience with it. We'll talk soon. God bless. Either looks like you're at the altar worshiping something you shouldn't. <laughs> Give <me. laughs> Giving thanks unto God for the bounty. <laughs> do that again. Sammy and Joseph, what do you think of your big brother? I, I believe the Bible says we are the uh, 
A cute. Oh, yeah. What was he doing? I get the exact <laughs> wording, but it's according to the priest to it. And the priest were to eat the sacrifices. To kill your people. Well, I know, but they said, some, they said something about it. A chosen priesthood of kill your people. God knew it. We are peculiar. As usual, we are the what exception. What was he doing, Mama? Show him. <laughs> Through the jar. <laughs> <laughs> is maple syrup is a gift of God. Not what, what the old adage is for the, pig, for the heathen. Uh, foods of the gods, but we don't have gods. We have a God. And this is food for the God. God sent through a tree. You'll yeah. never convince me that evolution happened. If you can get this from a maple tree, it <laughs> was not by accident. Amen. This goodness did not just happen. That's right. 